there. Thanks for joining me for today's mandatory activity. Uh, today we're going to be making bath bombs and specifically this guy, which is a game controller bath bomb that I'm calling Control Freak. Um, I have a Control Freak in my life. He's about nine. Uh, so if you have a Control Freak in your life and uh, this is something you're interested in, then stick around for the tutorial and I'll show you how to make this little guy. So bath bombs in terms of ingredients are not super difficult. Um, the you know, materials can be sourced really easily. Um, you don't have to buy a ton. Um, I will include links for you guys below for everything that I purchased. Um, I'll, I'll try to do it in smaller quantities if you, so you don't need, you know, 10 town buckets of things. And also a link for the mold, which is from um, the Fizz Fairy in Canada. Um, I was getting a bunch of other molds and so I picked it up thinking it was really, really cute and it is really, really cute and it works really well. The details are nice. Um, this is just a fun little project. So thanks for joining me and let's get to it. So let's make some control freak bubble bath bombs. Um, now this recipe uh, is not mine. This is from um, Eden Secret. I'll post her, uh, her channel link below. Um, and the reason I'm using her recipe instead of my standard um, bath bomb recipe is because this is the mold. It's just one of the uh, the molds that are made from you know the vacuum machine. Um, it's nice and sturdy. But um, when I was watching uh, one of her videos, she was making um, Christmas bath bombs in a very similar mold. And, um, you know, my bath bomb uh, mixture is typically pretty, um, I don't want to say wet, but it is, um, it is more sort of moisturizing. There, um, there's some shea butter in it. And um, I think this probably needs a more dry mixture. And since I know her recipe works with this mold type, I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try and actually it worked out really well. So I will share it with you, but full disclosure, it is not mine, it is hers. Um, I will link her channel below and you can go check her out as well. Um, she's darling. Um, okay, so we'll get started. Um, I have my studio lights, I, there's a really bad reflection. I, I've got um, fluorescent lights overhead. So I tried to, I put some parchment down just to try to cut down on the glare for you guys. So hopefully that is helpful and not just an extra layer of distraction. All right, we're gonna start off. I have this gigantic bowl and my scale. And I'm gonna tear out the scale. Uh, all of her measurements are in grams. She's in uh, the UK. So I'm gonna change my unit measurement to grams. And we're gonna start with baking soda, 1200 grams. And I made these little labels with my Cricut Joy, uh, which I also have a video for, so I'll have to dig that out and edit it and put it up. All right, 1200 grams of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Now, a lot of people do this in a mixer. I like to do it by hand. Um, I have it gloved up clearly. I just like to be, I like to feel the the you know the texture between my fingers so I can check for lumps. Okay, that's 1,200 grams on the nose. Next, I need 18 grams of SLSA sodium lauryl sulfur acetate. Um, and that is uh, the bubbling agent. It's also airborne, um, or it can be, it, it goes airborne really quickly, so I'm gonna get a mask. Okay, so I just have the gigantic uh, container here of my sodium lauryl sulfacetate. I have more on order because this one's almost empty. And tear out the scale again. 18 grams. I like to kind of put it in here and then there we go. And then cover it up just to keep it from sort of poofing into the air. And I don't know eventually I'm gonna mix it anyway, but at least it's not sitting on top. 
Um, and we also need 575 grams of citric acid, um, but I'm gonna save that to the end. Um, with citric acid is the is the, the the activating agent with baking soda that makes your bath bombs fizz. Um, and once it hits the liquids, you can start the fizzing reaction, um, you know, inadvertently. And I I do I don't make a ton of bath bombs, and I get a little bit nervous when my baking soda and my citric acid are already here, and then I add in the liquid and I see it start to foam. Um, so I prefer to get all of my liquids incorporated into the baking soda um, before I add the citric acid in because I find that I don't have to worry about the, the little mini eruptions. So I'm going to wait and do the citric acid last. All right, so these are my two dry ingredients to start, and then we're going to mix up the wet ingredients. Okay. We're gonna start with 12 grams of fractionated coconut oil. And you can really use any lightweight oil. Uh, I'll tear that out. 12 grams is not a lot. Done. Oh, that's 13, but that's gonna be all right. Uh, we need 19 grams of witch hazel. I have my witch hazel in a little spray bottle because typically when I'm making my bath bombs, I'll, I'll spray a little bit to re-wet the mixture when it starts to get dry. Um, so I'm just gonna get my 19 grams out of this bottle. And then we need, let's throw that out. All right, so then the last wet ingredient is uh, 12 grams of fragrance oil. I'm using grape soda fragrance oil from Craft Church Choice. If you haven't tried this, it is impressive how much it smells like grape soda, and particularly in bath bomb, because um, it's already kind of fizzy. All right, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask back on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add this in sort of slowly to the baking soda and SLSA. Um, again, I'm not worried about kicking off the fizzy reaction. I'm really doing it slowly because I want to um, have the control to incorporate it more slowly. And once the SLSA gets wetted down with these wet ingredients, it um, will be less likely to, you know, poof up in the air and irritate your nose and throat. Again, I just like to feel, I actually find this really soothing. <laughs> but I like to feel, I can feel some little blobs of baking soda. Um, I know people complain about their baking soda getting clumpy. Mine is typically not too bad, but my citric acid is often the thing that clumps up on me. I assume that's just, you know, because of my weather. Mm, it smells so good. It's that grape. It also kind of smells like grape hubba bubba. It's that like super, I don't know, very specific sweet grape scent. any more um, pockets of like actual liquid um, and it's not super well combined but it's combined enough that I feel comfortable putting the citric acid in now. So I get the scale back out and tear it out and we'll add in our 575 grams of citric acid. And I'm not going to color um, the batch because I'm leaving the controller white and we're going to mica paint it but I am going to add a surprise color inside feature so once we get this batch mixed up um, we'll make up the colorants for the surprise inside part all right so you can see my citric acid is clumpy all right 109 
get this mixed up and then we can do a little little test to see how wet the mixture is and whether we're happy with the texture. Now's the time I really want to get in here and get all of this between my fingers and the gloves, work through all of those little crumbly bits. Uh, especially since, you know, we're not using a electric mold or anything. This is a hand mold. So we're going to get in there with our fingers to press it into that controller. And we want it as smooth as we can get it. Feels pretty good. So I'm gonna take a handful and people always say it should feel like wet sand. And that's kind of like, you know, the bath bomb lingo. I, I mean, wet sand is like, you know, damp all the way down to like soupy. So there's so many strata of wet sand. Uh, I don't find that to be meaningful. So uh, what I like to do is take the handful, clump it together and then drop it. And if it doesn't break, when you drop it, you're in good shape. Um, if it's a little too dry, you'll do that. You'll drop it and it'll crunk. So um, I think we're good. If you do drop yours and it breaks, um, just go ahead and use a little bit more witch hazel. Um, again, I find the sprayer really helpful. Um, and that should really help you re-wet it. Um, don't over-wet it, obviously, because we need to we only have one mold, so we're going to pack the mold and then empty it, pack it, empty it, pack it, empty it. So we can't have it be, you know, so loose. It doesn't have time to sit in the mold and dry. All right, so let's set that aside and make our surprise colors. Now I just use these tiny little containers. I'm using little paper cups if they're, you know, not single-use plastics. Um, although these can be if... <laughs> If you don't wash them, they're just little micro scoops, um, but they are easy to wash, easy enough at least. Um, all right, so, and then our vegetable glycerin. So I'm just taking a, a new clean pipette. I'm gonna pinch the bulb, stick it in the glycerin, let it fill up. The glycerin's really thick, so it kind of takes a second here. This is about two mils. And I can tell that's not going to be enough. So let's, let's double that. Let's go for four mils of glycerin. Um, if you're doing one color, you'll want double the amount anyway. Um, let me double again. Um, I'm using two colors. I'm going to put one in one half of the controller and one in the other half of the controller. And I'm going to use the glycerin to kind of bloom the um, dye. And I'll show you in a second. I, a lot of people bloom their dye with water. I am just not confident enough to put water in my bath bomb mixture. <laughs> it's just, I can't, uh, I can't get comfortable with that, at least not now. Um, so I just use a little touch of glycerin. I try not to overdo it because um, you really don't need much inside the bath bomb. In fact, if you put too much in there, it will sort of erupt through the top of the bomb. Um, but so I kind of bloom the color with the glycerin. You'll see that in a second. All right. For my colorants, I'm using these two colorants from Nurture Soap. Uh, FDNC colorants, yellow and green. Um, I think the yellow goes really, really orange. Um, and you can see that the powder color itself is orange. It's confusing though, because the green is also orange. <laughs> so um, you'll see when the color starts to bloom that it'll you know, actually turn green. Um, but this yellow, um, maybe at least concentrated, I think is a pretty orangey yellow. So I'm gonna call this green and orange. So we'll take a little bit of the green, the very orange green dye and the micro scooper. I'm gonna do two. And over here, same thing. Maybe not 
it's like cheetah orange. That is really orange. Okay. And then give it a good stir. And it makes kind of this nice little paste. Um, I'm going to leave the scooper in there because I think that's a decent way to get it into the bath bomb. You really only need like one drop to make the surprise color action happen. And you can see here the orange powder is decidedly turning green as it gets bloomed into that glycerin. It's kind of magical. And it looks like this sort of terrible mossy green, but once it hits the uh, bath water, it disperses into like a really pretty, like a spring green. All right, there we go. Let me set those up here. Can we grab our mold? I'll clear off this workspace a little. Okay, so I've grabbed a uh, metal spoon. You can kind of use whatever size you want. I find the smaller one is easier to work with. And we're gonna use that to kind of press the, the mixture into the mold. Just grab yourself a handful. I always like to do this part over the bowl. And I'm filling it to the top, but very loosely because I want to compact it and then put the surprise colors in and then fill the whole rest of the way. So once you start sort of packing this in and patting it down, you'll find that it's about halfway. And you can kind of feel it give under your fingers. So you'll feel where it's not super tight because that is where you have a little bit of bounce back. So this feels pretty good. And flip it over and see that it's, you know, it's folding or conforming nicely. Leaving? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you'll find that it's about halfway full. And then I'm just going to take this little micro scooper. I really only want like one dot of color. Just like that. And now I'm going to take the mixture and put it on top. And I'm not going to smear it. I'm really going to like plop it. Plop it on top so that I'm not, you know, brushing those blobs of color. Um, we will have to brush off some of the extra here, but I, I want to be confident that I'm not brushing off any of those colors. All right, now I'm continuing to pack it with my hand. Yeah, it feels pretty good. And then with a the spoon, I use the back of the spoon, which is another thing they did, um, Karen did on Eden's Secret. Um, it's so just, I kind of let you burnish it. You sort of like get the spoon in there, rub it back and forth, and it makes the bottom nice and smooth. So you can see it's pretty nice looking. And she likes to take her spoon and kind of go around the edge. And I didn't really understand that when I watched her video because I wasn't sure what it was doing. But after I made my first bomb with this type of mold, it became pretty clear because if you do that, it sort of packs the material into the mold without leaving like a crusty lip around the edge. So it actually just makes a really nice finish. All right. So that's the process. And then we just unmold it and it really couldn't be easier literally flip it over and it's lovely so so i'm gonna do the rest of these and i'll speed that up for you guys
looks like about half of my mix left. Um, I can feel it getting kind of dry on the top, particularly. Do another like squeeze. It's still squeezing together, but texturally it feels a little bit crunchy. Um, so I'm just gonna give it like two squirts of witch hazel and just kind of re-wet it. Oh, that feels better. So you'll notice when you mix up your mixture that it um, was really cool to the touch. And um, after I just checked it, it was, you know, sort of room temperature again. Um, and now that I have witch hazeled it, it is back to being a little bit cool to the touch. It's better. So I'll break up some more of those little clumps from having sat. this other mold. I thought I'd just give it a try. Um, I have pre-orders for 15 of these game controller bath bombs, but I can tell already I'm not going to get 15 out of this batch. I think I got 13 out of the first batch I made, so that's not a surprise. <laughs> but I figure um, since I'm going to have to make a second batch anyway, I might just give this a try and see how it looks. I'm going to put this in that snowflake. It's another FDNC blue coloring. Um, you can see safe for lips, eyes, external use, and bath bombs. And that's what I prefer. That's pretty. I haven't used this one before. I've used the turquoise, but this one is much more intense looking. Well, let's find out. super fun. These are the three I bought. So these molds, this is the ugly winter sweater, we'll call it. Christmas is past. Um, all three of these molds came from Fizz Fairy in Canada. Um, I have not, so I was already getting uh, my order from Fizz Fairy. That's where I like to buy all of my, um, my eco glitters, my biodegradable glitter uh, from Fizz Fairy, uh, fizzfairy.ca. And they have all of these really nice press molds in there. You know, they're sturdy and they're a great quality. And um, I have had a lot of luck with them. So these are the three that I got for this year to try. And the only one I actually got around to trying time-wise was the game controller, which I made on Christmas Eve. Um, and I made a whole batch and Really, because I, I, you know, wasn't going to make a teeny tiny one. It's so much work. Um, might as well make the whole batch. But I really wanted one for Spencer's Christmas stocking. And I uh, thought, well, I'll just, you know, put the other ones up on the Facebook page for my neighborhood and see if anyone else needs them for stocking stuffers because, you know, they're here and I had, you know, 12 more, whatever the case may, may be. Um and uh, sold all of them. I went around on Christmas Eve and dropped off little packages at people's doorsteps. It made me feel nice. Got some Christmas feels. And uh, there's some folks who wanted some apparently and didn't get any, so <laughs> that's why I have pre-orders for this week. So get those out to those folks. And they're probably up on the website. Why not? There we go. All right. Let's unglove and I'll zoom you in for a close up. Here they are. Look pretty good. I can see there's a little crack. It's uh, right in here. Um, 
Um, so I'll keep an eye on that one tomorrow when we go to paint. There's another one here, right along the button. And these are really where that first batch also cracked on me. So um, it's not unusual, there's another one right around that button. The other ones look pretty good. Even the sweater and the snowflake look nice and even. All right, so we'll come back tomorrow and give these a little mica painting. Okay, so it's the next day. These have dried. I see sort of the same cracking patterns that um, were here before they dried overnight. Um, I moved them just to get them out of uh, any kind of humidity in the studio. Um, so, I mean, that one's like, that one's pretty cracky. That one's pretty cracky. Um, so, you know, it's, it's never a perfect batch, but there are more, more good ones than bad. And so that's, that's a good thing. Um, I did notice when I was looking through them that one of them, that one had a leak through. So that's the only one where the surprise inside is really anxious to get out. Um, but you can hear, I mean, they are, I'll do it with one of the crappy ones. They are, they rock hard. They almost sound like, um, ceramics. Like they're really, really nice. They're dry, they're perfectly dry and they feel good. Um, and then our little, little samples are over here. Lovely. You can kind of hear that sounds like ceramic just when they touch each other. Okay. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get these mica painted. Okay, I'm going to get some more of those little paper cups. Um, let me put my gloves on. Um, I need one for like a steel gray, um, four for each of the button colors, and one I'm going to do like a, a pearlescent kind of gold uh, as an accent. Um, you need some rubbing alcohol. The higher the um, alcohol percentage, the better. Um, so I have 70% and 99%. Um, so I'm going to use the 99% because we want it to evaporate as much as possible. And mine is actually 99.5. <laughs> um, I get it in, in bulk for, for the studio, but um, you can still get uh, 99, sometimes 91% um, rubbing alcohol from, um, from the drugstore or the grocery store. So I'm just putting a whole bunch in one and I'm going to use um, a pipette to disperse it to the others. I just have some old craft brush brushes. Um, there's nothing special about those. They're straight up from the dollar store or Amazon. I think I had like a hundred for $4 or something. <laughs> okay, I just wanna talk for a second about um, mica colors. So there are plenty of different kinds of mica. And just like we did when we were looking for um, a colorant for the inside, the surprise inside. We went with the FD&C um, colors. For mica, I want the sparkle of the mica, but you have to make sure you're getting, um, you know, a, a bath bomb safe mica. And, you know, usually, so this is Nurture Soap, this is Trial by Fire. This one actually says for soap use only. So this is not a bath bomb safe red. On the other hand, this one, Brick Rust, safe for lips, eyes, external use, and bath bombs. So they make it pretty clear, um, you know, Crafter's Choice from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Uh, they do the same thing here, approved use includes bath bombs. Um, alternatively, you might see your mica say cosmetic grade, and that um, is your, your, your cue that you can use this uh, for bath bombs as well, because it is safe for um, you know, cosmetics, which is sort of the most uh, tender of applications. Um, and then there are some, you know, that you may just not completely know for sure, and you should just go to the manufacturer, in this case, go to Brambleberry and see if this particular green is um, bath foam safe. So you have to kind of check what you have um, if it is not, um, you know, immediately apparent. I typically just go for the colors that just explicitly say bath bombs or explicitly say cosmetic grade, um, cause then I just don't have to think about it. So I'm gonna take some of this alcohol. Um, I don't want a ton in each of these containers because 
I'm gonna mix the mica in and I want more of a paste. Um, so I probably should have gotten another, I'll use another cup here. Um, just thinking I, I don't want a whole lot left over in the original cup either. Um, okay, so, so there's, there's just like a small amount. Um, I want more of the dark gray than anything else um, because that one has more surface. The buttons are going to be dark gray and the tippy tops up there. So I think this one probably has more. I typically like to mix my micas with a popsicle stick. I don't know why. I Something about the sound of the popsicle stick on the side of the paper cup that I find really satisfying. And Anybody else find that sound satisfying? I don't know what it is. All right. So that may be like a tiny bit thin. In the middle would have been nice. So I'm going to let this sit for a second and let some of that alcohol evaporate and try to let it sort of thicken to a little bit thicker than this. And in the meantime, mix up the other colors. And this, uh, this gold Enigma from Nurture, how well you can see it. It looks like a white powder, but it's got that gold shift um, around the end. So I love this because um, it's just sort of, it's very subtle. And I'm gonna use that to paint kind of around the, the controller section. Or the button section, I should say. I'm going to start with um, kind of a medium sized brush. I'm going to go into that dark, sort of steely gray that we mixed first, which has thickened up a little bit. I'm just going to take a little bit on my brush. Looks like I just ashed some of it onto the bomb. I certainly did. That's unfortunate. And I'm just going to kind of dab it on. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. <laughs> I know that is not super helpful, but hopefully I'm zoomed in close enough that you can kind of see. I mean, obviously it doesn't need to be perfect. It's a bath bomb. It's going to, you know, dissolve. Um, so try not to get too precious about it. Same here. Okay. I have my little brush and I'm going to use the little brush to do the red. And so I think the button color goes yellow, red, green, blue. So this one is the red one. Again, look a little bit dry. Doesn't need much, it's just a little dot. You'll clean off your brush in between. You can use your extra little cup of leftover rubbing alcohol. Go in with the yellow. Oops, so you can see that that one is too wet because um, it immediately started to kind of spread. So I'm just going to kind of aim for up here where there's a lot less liquid. That's better. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. These are a little bit loose. Okay, 
Not much to it. That's pretty easy. And then I'm going to take my largest brush. And this one's a little bit... Um, I don't know how to describe it. I'm kind of going for more of like a dry brush effect. So you can see all the liquid is is here and there's sort of like the pasty stuff at the top of my cup. So that's actually what I am going for is the more the drier bits. And all I'm going to do is kind of hit the highlight of the outline of this side. It's almost like it's just getting a little bit of the light around those buttons. And again, there's very little product on my brush. Okay, and then on the other side, just getting a little bit more over here, I'm gonna do the around the outside part again. Again, kind of dry. And then I'm gonna hit the top of those buttons. So it ends up sort of helping make them a little more dimensional. Right down here. Just like that. And then I did this little guy in the center. That's sort of a more wet application. And I did completely forget those little buttons, so let's go back and do those with the gray. And that takes two seconds. That, and this one I don't always get into a little triangle, but that one didn't look too bad. Okay, and that's it. I'll hold this up for you so you can get a good peek. But you can see, you know, just a subtle shimmer around those two button panels. Um, you know, these will get uh, shrink wrapped because you have to really keep them, you know, moisture proof. Um, so I do have to shrink wrap these, unfortunately. Um, but let's go ahead and do, I'm going to actually insert some, some footage in here from my first batch because um, I did a a drop test in the utility sink so you can see all of the foaming and bubbling and surprise color and all of that so hopefully this was helpful and i will see you guys next time bye okay so i've done my best to uh simulate a bathtub <laughs> This is the most water I can get into a, a vessel. It's my utility sink here in the, uh, in the studio. So we'll see if the surprise color inside action actually works. Um, also, this is not just a bath bomb, it's a bubble bath bomb. So um, the effervescence of the baking soda and citric acid together um, really kick off the bu bubble reaction. So you'll see a ton of bubbles disappearing by themselves, even without any running water. And fingers crossed we get some surprise colors somewhere towards the end. All right, here we go. From the colors. There's green and orange. Ooh, gently color your bath water. Okay. <laughs> it smells really good. And then once it actually effervesces for real, um, you get even more of that grape soda, you know, authenticity. It smells to me like, I'm going to date myself, but like grape knee-high. Uh, maybe Shasta. 